Hello everyone, we are here to talk about shapes and paths. Now I'm just uh, doing a little bit of quick drawing, just so I have something to draw on top of. Something we can use with our paths. So, how about an anime girl? All right, so having gotten some start on this, let's talk about paths and what they are good for. First off, we need to define a few things about paths. I'll start by adding a path with the pen tool. Beep, boop, 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 boop. Now a path is comprised of two things. The first is an anchor point, which comprises this entire path. And an anchor point has two subcategories known as a bezier. Something like this doesn't have any beziers, and that means it draws a straight line. Uh, but this one here, you can see, has these weird little handle things. And this is known as a bezier. You can oftentimes have them going together. So this one, you can see, orients the same as this one over here. But you can change the nature of this path by pulling the bezier in and out. So if I have a path with multiple beziers, you can further modify this. First off, I'm going to switch to the arrow tool. So one way you can modify them is if you use the arrow tool, you can hold shift and control. Alt, there it is. Alt. And that will break this bezier in half. So again, you select a point, and then while holding alt, you can break the bezier. And that's nice because with one path, you can basically make any amount of shapes. You can do straight line, or you can do curved lines, and this time I'm going to hold Alt at the time of making the path. Or you can have beziers that go together. Now, the other things that we should know about, as far as def uh, definitions go for this, you have two tools for selecting, which are the Path Select tool, aka okay, the black arrow. And this will grab the whole path at once. You can hold Shift, just like other selections uh, methods in Photoshop, and add to selection. You can also box select to get multiples. And you can also switch to the direct select tool temporarily with control. So I'm holding control, and now I can switch to this. And then after I let go, of, after that I let go of control, and you can see we're back on direct select permanently. You can also toggle this with Shift A. Shift A toggles that. Then you have, I guess, the paths, uh, the pen tool. I'm going to actually get rid of some of these paths. So then you have the tools that actually make paths. Uh, the first one is the pen tool. The way it works, you click, and you click to the next point. Straight lines happen if you click without moving. And if you click and hold, a bezier point comes out. Now you might have just noticed, what if I have a curve like this and I want to go into a straight line? Well, it generates the starting bezier there. 
So if you want to change the way that this is coming out, hold Alt and click on this at the time of construction, and that will remove the approaching Bezier. There's also the freeform pen tool. And it does a pretty good job of interpreting these. And the curvature pen tool, which depending on your tastes, maybe you like better. Give it that work path. So a good example of this is what if you have a circle and you know that you want to go around that uh, circle. The curvature pen tool kind of assumes that you're going to be drawing a circle and so it just naturally sort of makes these at the start and then you can go in after the fact. I prefer the other method which is the regular pen tool which gives me uh, an extra step where I can control it a little more and the opportunity to break it a little more. Lastly, you have the shapes tool. Here you can see the problem with this, which is it's multiple tools, none of which start with the letter U, but the hotkey is U. And also, depending on your viewpoint, uh, this line is a pretty nebulous shape icon, so you might get lost in thinking about where this is on uh, the menu here. So when I say shape tool, you might think to yourself, it's not the square tool, so I'm not going to use that. But just know that it's storing all these. Now these use paths by default, but there's three ways that we can have this enter. You can have it be a straight up path, which might be helpful if you're going to later trace this. So this is like a little crowd populator that I made. You can also have it start off as a shape. So if I do that, it just automatically creates this. Now you might be wondering how it's making this. And it's kind of uh, a shape mask. So, so to show you an example of that, let's say I have this as a path. So same guy, let's set it to path. Let's say we have a solid color layer. And it's barbarian red. So let's say I then combine that with this vector. And while I've generated this, I haven't done anything to it. Photoshop knows we're on a layer. So if I switch to the path tool and right click, I can make this a vector mask. And now this vector mask icon appears here. I'm going to have to delete this. So that's basically under the hood the multiple steps that happen when you use this set to uh, shape. It's the same thing as a color fill or one of these options, but instead it's doing the step of creating it as a vector mask for you. However, if you have stuff lying around and you need to make a vector mask, just so you know, it's right clicking with this and making a vector mask. Now I need to be on a layer. Right click. Great vector mask. And it's kind of convoluted, but it's just kind of crappy to know that it's hard to set it from over here. So the other thing you should know about is where these things are stored, which is over here on the paths panel. And you might notice that there's this uh, separate layer created all the time called the work path. This is very similar to using the quick mask in pixel form as a channel. It's just a selection that I'm making temporarily. And it turns it into a selection. I have my quick mask color set to green right now. So, where was I? Uh, 
that's how you make vector masses. Cool. The other cool things you can do with uh, this layer is you can just use pixels as the thing. And you can use this just like a brush. You can type in numbers for uh, the amount of opacity. You can choose shapes just like a brush. So pardon me while I tell you some of these. So it's just one of the shape tools inside of here. And when it's set to pixels, you can do things like make roads really fast. So oftentimes I do that, and I'll even change my blend mode. So you can uh, add in some sunlight with color dodge, for instance, as a shape. Or you can add a shadow by setting it to multiply. And then all the time I will set my opacity to I'll set my opacity to zero, and not zero, like ten percent, and I'll draw with multiple colors over and over. Until I get to the point where it's the color I like. It's almost black enough. Let's say that's the color of black I'm looking for. I'll then color pick off of that by holding Alt. And then I'll set my opacity to 100% with zero. And then it's just done on the first try. But I test my way up to there. The line tool is also very helpful in that you can use it for quick perspective stuff. So if I have this set to pixels, it's very handy if I'm just like trying to highlight a building or something. You can change the weight. So on and so forth. So some use cases that you might see for this uh, include using vectors to select. So you might have previously used the lasso tool. And sometimes you're doing this, and it really sucks that I'm trapped with only polygons here. And also, uh, there's a limit to how flexible it is. So if I am correcting something, and let's say I maybe make a mistake like that, I can hit delete with the lasso select to go back in my steps, but I can't really get a soft curve immediately. And I'm having to do multiple clicks along her chin to get it correct. And it's just getting kind of tedious. And then what happens if I accidentally double click too early? And it does that. Instead, with the path tool, I'm going to set this, or the pen tool, set to the path, I can now just use a series of curves. I'm going to adjust for this harsh cut from her chin by holding Alt. I click that to change the Bezier type. You can also hold Control to get a temporary uh, selection arrow while you're getting this. So if I mess up like that, I can hold Control and adjust for it. Change that. Put this in the forehead. And right there, I went back to using this. You just need one or two really big vector projects to suffer through, and you'll start getting really comfortable with how these are used. So I could do something like that, and now, before I continue, I can adjust this, so I can look at this and realize that this was too far gone, and I need to adjust for it. I can look at things like this and maybe think about if I want the bangs to come out at a sharper angle. So it's much more flexible. Now, again, I'm trying to use this to make selections. And at this point, I usually right click and make selection. You can also do this from the paths dialog. 
here's my work path by clicking this. Now the other thing that might happen is you don't want to lose these paths. Sometimes they're automatically saved if it's applied as a vector mask. So if I have this, create vector mask. Now this is just permanently on this layer. And I can go back to it whenever I want. But you might not have it as a layer mask, and you still want to save it. You can do that by dragging the work path down to new, just like we do with channels. The other way you can do this, if you don't want to mess with vector masks, is I could just grab that path, and I did it a cool way. So if I had this path, I could make a selection off of it. So I can just right click and say make selection, and there you have it. Of course, I accidentally did it a much cooler way by holding control and clicking on this. Because if you do that over any th thumbnail, it gives you what's selected in that layer. So I'll do this one, now that it's a selection, as a normal mask. So usually when I'm making line art, at this point, I move the line art to the top layer, and I set it to multiply. By the way, I'm trying to get this to be the reverse. And if you go to the properties, I think you can set it to reverse somehow. Oh, I forget that one. Anyways, usually at this point, you start using a mask like this for your selections so that you can start having a character. And from here, I can start having things like clipping masks, where I know that this one it's going to be a purple hair. So, because it's clipped by alt clicking in between the layers, it becomes subordinate to that. And now I can have a mask that's just her hair. Up here, I'm going crazy when I make this because I don't need to worry about it. So now she has purple hair. And then you can paint out from there. Uh, another thing that you use masks for is for brushwork. So I'm actually going to switch my pen to the freeform pen tool. And what this does is it lets me just draw with the pen using a Wacom tablet. So I have a Wacom tablet down here. And I'm actually going to be pretty loosey goosey with this because uh, what I'm going to do is use these vectors for inking this girl.
You get the idea. I haven't drawn anime by choice since I was in 11th grade. I had a big falling out with anime. I'm going to turn off Snap before I go over there. I'll get it off. Just because I was worried about these. Oh, hey, that's a cool thing I should talk about. I think if you have a pen. That is another thing you can do. Let's just make some... Well, let's finish up what I was doing. So one thing you could do is have this work path, and I'll save it. Uh, I can use this as a driver for my brush. So the first thing you have to do when you're using this technique is get your brush working correctly. I'm going to just click off of this, and on this layer I'm going to try and get something resembling ink. In fact, oh, wouldn't it be great if you could search brushes in Photoshop? There's wet media. Yeah, sure, we'll go with this one. Now, you can already see the problem I'm running into with this, which is uh, this brush is set up so that it flows inward and outward. And you can see this in the brush menu, where you can see that the shape dynamics has pen pressure driving the side. Now, the problem with this is that how does it feel to use this brush? You can see these problems, and you probably felt this problem, which is the Wacom tablet is only a certain level of sensitive. And a lot of times it goes overboard. If I'm trying to fight this sort of diarrhea look in a sort of naturalistic painting, this usually makes me adjust my maximum size jitter so that the smallest thing that it can get to is relative to the highest well, what if we wanted that smooth transition? How do we get it? There are things you can do to cheat. I think there's something called Lazy Nizumi. And uh, there's also the smoothing, which we can crank up. But it's still not perfect. You saw that little jump there. And it just stinks when you're trying to turn a corner with that sort of thing. And it doesn't work out. So, one way that we can put paths to use is I can, having generated, I want to get this brush the right size for inking. I'll change my flow back up to full. That's okay, right? I'm going to go back to that path I saved. There we go. No. All right, real quick, we make it. So if you're thinking careful, you might put in a lot more time and effort getting these lines correct. So you can use the pen tool and also go in with uh, other tools and modify these Beziers to make them softer. But one thing I like is that I can now uh, go back to the arrow tool, select all these, right click, and stroke this path. I'm going to make sure I'm on a new layer. So you right click and choose stroke path and it'll give you an option of what you want to choose. I just set my brush up so that it would function hopefully like ink 
So I'm going to choose the brush. And you can see the result. Uh, if you put a lot of work making sure into making sure these uh, vectors are perfect, it's like very nice for inking. But you can get soft lines a little easier. Uh, what else can you do with these? One thing I also use paths for is just text on a path. If I get the text tool, you'll notice that when I hover over this path. It lets me choose to put some text on there. You end up getting two things to choose, this like start point and end point. And you can also go above or below the path and that'll flip it. And now I can change it. And then lastly, I also enjoy uh, what is it? Yeah. defining shapes, which to show you one more time, all you do is you start by making any sort of selection, like a hideous star. So I'll use this path. And, uh, I'll make it a selection. Oh wait, never mind. I don't need to make it a selection. If I had a selection, I would make it into a path. But I just drew the path. So then, what you do is you right-click with the arrow tool. You have the arrow tool on you, and you right-click on the path. And you can define a custom shape. There it is. And then I can use the custom shape tool. You draw. Where is it? There it is. So just as a quick exercise to finish this off for path stuff. Uh, I'm going to get the freeform pen tool. And I'm going to do a contour drawing, which is where I just continuously hold down and I don't let up until the drawing is done. Obviously, mistakes were made. So obviously the mouse let up once, but I'm otherwise trying to keep this as continuous as possible.
Опа. Weird. Anyways, there's some stuff that I say you should try out. I'm actually going to modify this brush real fast. Maybe give it very slightly better. Get some minimum diameter. I'm just going to go through and choose some different brushes. Oh, it's beautiful. A masterpiece. Anyways, uh, play around with this, and hopefully I hope this uh, taught you some stuff about vectors that are pretty cool. Bye.